I wonder if you believe in some sort of afterlife or continuity of consciousness after death. As our reading indicates, Daniel 4 does. In his book, Ancestral Medicine, he talks about working with ancestors for healing. Now, a wonderful thing about Unitarian Universalism is that no one will tell you what to believe regarding an afterlife of any kind. I certainly won't tell you because I don't know. <laughs> My science brain tells me to be skeptical of all claims of ghosts and spirits and visitations. My heart and my experience tell me not to judge them either. I certainly know that my some of my ancestors are very much alive for me in my thoughts and my daily activities. When I was a kid, if we said to my father, what kind of bird is that? He would always say, it's an Oregon junco. <laughs> and we'd go, no, dad, I think that's a Stellar's jay. <laughs> but he was convinced, right? Um, so he was always teasing us with that. Well, now, I mean, he, he died 30, almost 33 years ago. And whenever I see an a, a Oregon junco, which isn't even called an Oregon junco anymore, <laughs> it's like a dark-headed junco. It's that little sparrow that's got the black head. I think of my dad, and they are incredibly common. So I think of my dad all the time, which is really kind of a lovely little, I don't know, like a, like a little private joke between us. So for me, he's very much alive in my thoughts, uh, and I find that very dear. And I know that all of my ancestors are still with me in memory and in inherited traits, in mannerisms, in stories. My parents passed on to me loves of education and nature and music, the equity and compassion. And they taught me the importance of making the world a better place. My mother's mother taught me that fried chicken and watermelon are fine breakfast foods, that Rice Krispie treats can end all arguments, and that there really is no use crying over spilled milk. My parents, grandparents, aunts, and uncles taught me about love and what it is to be family. I'm grateful for the legacy I inherited from them. And I also know that I would have disagreed with some of my ancestors on social and political issues, and that is left to me to try to undo some of the cultural norms that they upheld. I remember my mother once saying that she was proud that her children had fewer prejudices than she did, and that she knew that her grandchildren would have fewer prejudices still because of the way that they were being raised. And I believe that's true. It's become important to me to do everything I can to be a good ancestor. You heard that term, being a good ancestor by working for justice and equity now, and passing on the values of love and justice and interconnectedness, among many others, to those who come after me. And I claim a lot of other ancestors as well, who aren't blood relatives, but who are the teachers, the mentors, the, the UU forebears, um, among many others. Um, and I've worked some of those little, those folks into this service. Um, I love that Brian started with a piece by Florence Price today. Um, Florence Price, who um, was actually an early 20th century Black composer in the U.S., and who's, who I think was the first, maybe the first Black person composer to have a symphony performed by a major orchestra in this country. Um, and her, her work was lost for decades and has reemerged. And I just, I love her um, and what she stood for and her incredible musicianship. Um, 
we sang the children out with be ours a religion which like sunshine goes everywhere those are the words of theodore parker an early unitarian was writing in the in the mid 1800s um and a fine fine man and example so those exemplary beings um have inspired my life and that's so i claim them I certainly claim them. And I wonder who you claim as ancestors. Who are the people that you look to um, and what you inherited from them? I wonder which you identify most with or which you learned the most from or some important lessons from. And of course, most of us had ancestors who were not inspiring. Or who may have caused harm. And I just want to acknowledge that. Something, is something up? You're, you're not hearing me? Oh my goodness. I apologize. Is this better? Better? I'm sorry. Um, I could start over. No, I won't. I won't. Um, so, and we may all have ancestors that are simply were never spoken of, right? Out of fear or shame or just they were absent. They were out of the picture. So we need to acknowledge them as well. That here on, as we approach All, all Souls Day, that we need to remember to remember all the souls and all the ancestors. And it is that combined legacy of all of them that brought us to this life and to this moment, where in spite or because of them, we are here. And so this morning, I'm going to invite you to recognize some of the ancestors that brought you to this moment. I'm going to pass around a basket that contains heart-shaped tags. For you to write the name of an ancestor or two or three, whatever you feel inspired to do this morning. And we're going to pause for a moment so that you have time to think about this and write on the heart. And then we're going to invite you up one by one to place your tag on the tree. And there are some hooks on here and there's also some ties on the hearts. As you come up, you are welcome to speak the name of the, the person that you wrote down into the mic and maybe even say uh, just a very, very short um, statement about why they um, inspired you or what you carry from them. Um, and if you brought a photo or a memento, you can show that, you can place it up here if you like. And those of you on Zoom, if you would like, you can write the name of an ancestor on uh, in the chat, and Percy will write those down, and we'll make sure that they get onto the tree as well. Okay. Also, if you um, would rather have us bring the mic to you, you can raise your hand, and, and we will do that. But for now, let's just take a moment. Brian will play. Um, take a moment to write your ancestor on the tag. Thank you. 